Welcome everybody to the Wednesday webinars organized by Facial Manipulation Institute by Stecco. Uh, before starting as a FM, allow me to send a strong hug of closeness uh, in this dark moment uh, to Natalie, Kobe and the Israeli FM friends. Uh, today for us, uh, it's a great pleasure to have uh, with us uh, uh, Tina Latinen Supanki, and uh, the title of the speech will be How Fascia is Connected to the Movement Control. Uh, Tina uh, is uh, um, a component of the Finnish Association of Orthopedic Manual Therapy, is a lecturer for a Finnish Association for Physiotherapists, uh, counting education from uh, uh, 2008, and uh, she is an international structure of uh, facial manipulation level one, level two, since uh, uh, 2014. Uh, so, uh, the platform uh, uh, Tina is your. I want to uh, remember to our colleague uh, that it is possible to write questions during the uh, Tina speech with the question mark. Uh, uh, in the bottom on the right of your screen, and uh, we will ask this question at the end of the Tina speech. So the platform is your. Thank you so much, Tina. Oh, thank you, Carmelo. Will you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, this topic is something that really made me interested in in fashion manipulation and opened my eyes to so many things that I had been thinking of before and um, how fascia is connected to movement control. Movement control, as you know, there are so many ways of, uh, of uh, interpreting that and testing that and thinking what it comes from. And is it from the brain? Is it from the periphery? Is it something in between or what it is? And um, I will check this thing out now, uh, like after my, my own uh, experiences and uh, I tried to answer you the clinical questions that I had. Here are some pictures or some photos of my, my patients. And I will explain the movement control disorder via the fascia and via the nervous system and via these clinical uh, examples. When we think of uh, different ways of moving and controlling the movement, it's always from the periphery that we get some... Uh, or so much input and then the system has to coordinate the movement according to that input and according to that way of doing that you can do and then there were so many questions then i thought that why people highly motivated uh who could um i think uh the pointer in here yeah who could uh, for example here you look at the hand of one of the violinist and thinking of the uh, people who are doing a lot of uh, work, uh, sensitive work, and also repetition, um, thousands of repetition every week, that suddenly they, without any trauma, they lose the movement or they lose the control of their fingers. And also what happens during edema, what happens during after traumas, and then when the people don't have any contact on that area. So when we look at this, um, Next slide is a bit slow here, but don't worry. I'll get the next slide. Doesn't change from here. Where did I put this one? Marco, can you help me here? It doesn't change. The slides slow very go very slowly. Yeah. Yeah. So the lecture plan today is that uh, first we, of course, we go through what is uh, when we talk about movement control, it's not about fascia, it's about system, the, how the fascial structures are working together and also together with our uh, central nervous system. And then the background, why I did this, and then also the basic research. And I will start from... Uh, surprisingly from the interstitium i'm not starting from muscle spindle but i'm starting from the surroundings and the reason for that is that we seldom think of uh, what is affecting all the receptors we know about the densification we know about the changes 
but then uh, as a teacher in FM, I always get the questions that what makes the densification, what makes the changing in the viscosity and so on. And then I, I, I go on via the, the system all the way to the one small study that we did on, on the movement control disorder. And the next slide again, it's a bit slow here. Yes, Dina, there is a little bit of problem, a uh, delay in the platform, okay? Can you, Marco, can you turn it on to the number four? It doesn't, it doesn't work from here. Thank you. So, uh, already mentioned about the fascia. When we are talking about the fascia, then we are talking about the uh, 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 structure or uh, there are very many different st structures and usually when we are referring to movement control we are referring to fascias connected to muscular system but also then they are always working together the the, the fascia inside the muscle the fascia outside the muscle but also the superficial fascia is uh, connected to movement control disorders and then uh, we need to understand why uh, how we are building up the system that is controlling the movement and connected to the nervous system uh can you put the next slide on please number five there uh, there is a very nice quite new article about the myofascial unit <clears throat> when we're talking about uh and looking at the functional unit and especially movement. Then there are uh, in the myofascial unit, of course, the motor units that are working uh, in, in according to, uh, if we think of the movement direct direction, but then the nerves and then also the connective tissue that is inside and it's very important in the force transmission and also the giving the surroundings to the receptors and when we think of this uh, the specific movement then we need to have everything connected to that and everything working very very good and if you think of motor coordination and there will be so many different um, explanations for this uh, clinical uh, ex examples that we are looking here then we really need to Put all this together when we think of the the function of the fascia. Then we go to the next slide, number six. And should there be any problems on this? I don't know. It doesn't. Can you, Marco, put the next slide? Thank you. So any alteration affecting one of the internet connecting elements, if it's the uh, vessels and nerves, if it's the muscle spindle, and I will come to that stiffness. Muscle stiffness is something that is very often referred to connected to movement control. And uh, the, there are very many ways of seeing the muscle stiffness. It can be from the nervous system. It can be also from the very, very tiny little uh, edema in the system. And also the uh, cytokines, the inflammation can cause muscle stiffness via a circle that, that we will, uh, I will explain soon. Then also pain, pain has an effect on how we, how we move. And also then of course the altered perception, what we feel and then what we do is always a, a, a answer to that. So we start from, uh, from the interstitium because when we think of the viscosity and when we think of the surroundings of the receptors, especially the muscle spindle and also of course the Golgi tendon and also how the, uh, the muscles function then we, they need to have a good surroundings. And the surroundings and the viscosity is highly dependent on the hyaluronic acid, how the hyaluronic acid homeostasis is there. And usually when we tell about the hyaluronic acid and then, then accumulation of the hyaluronic acid, for example, in neurology and spasticity, or then immobilization or, or over repetition, but also during the uh, prolonged stress, stress is also causing inflammation in our tissues and that changes already the interstitium. So there is a nice uh, article again where Carmelo was uh, the first writer here. So what's old and is new again. So how important the interstitium is for the 
the homeostasis and uh, for the circling of the hyaluronic acid. And um, there is a, the power, as we know that there, there are cells that are producing the hyaluronic acid, the, the fasciocytes that are kind of fibroblasts, about 30% of the fibroblasts are these uh, fasciocytes. So the producing is there. But then there has to be also turnover so that there is not too much of the accumulation. And uh, when we think of, uh, when we look at the uh, next slide, then uh, here uh, the important part of the, the turnover and then the proper physiology of the viscosity is the lymph. And if the viscosity is different, then the movement control is already lost. So that's why I, I really urge you to think about what's going on inside the muscle and inside the fascia when you see a person who has problems in controlling the movement, who has problems in, uh, in uh, doing, uh, for example, you, the giving exercises or whatever in a, in a, way, in a way. And uh, if you look here uh, the, about the, these, uh, the hierarchy, the fibroblast first uh, in, inside the the tissue so the pre lymph the pre lymph is something that when we have the arterioles and venules and the diffusion in there so about 10 percent of the of the uh, liquid is uh, of the plasma is is, uh, is staying in the in in the tissue and the lymph lymph circulation that's not the circulation it's the lymph flow starts from the tissues and the it's so important that we have a good uh, circulation. So any change in blood circulation, any change in the surroundings here makes a change also in the, in the viscosity. And uh, for example, in, uh, uh, during cancer, after the cancer treatments and, uh, and uh, if there is any edema, always these patients have problems in, in, moving, in controlling the movement. They have problems also in mobility and also uh, the body awareness and feeling the body part. And um, when before we go further to the patients, we go through the receptors. So you remember the muscle spindle is the main thing, when we, the main receptor when we think of motor control. And the muscle spindle is uh, located within the, uh, within the um, in, intermuscular connective tissue and attached to the perimesium. There are, um, and the muscle spindle is also, uh, it's, a, uh, it's uh, very well innovated. About 30% of the uh, ventral horn neurons, the gamma motor neuron, is uh, innovating the interfusional uh, fibers. And when we go over to the function here, we see that there are receptors that are detecting the length and then also detecting the dynamic of the muscle spindle. And the length detecting they are also they are affecting the innovation of the gamma. But then the gamma is very sensitive for all the other things. For example, the pressure from surroundings and the irritation from the surroundings that are connected to, for example, these edemas or, or then the um, pH or then uh, the cytokines around there. And then the other thing, the the receptor, the Golgi, that is measuring the effect uh, the effect of the muscle activity. These two are working together. But then an important thing that is usually forgotten uh, um, in, in the movement coordination are the free nerve endings that are so important and they are the only, there are no proprioceptors inside the muscle, but they are the nerve endings that are detecting the mechanical uh, surroundings and the tensioning. So the uh, spindle is measuring, but then an important part of the uh, uh, also of the motor control is based on the information that we get also from this group. Then we go to the next slide. Here. So when we think of this, uh, uh, the surroundings of all these receptors, uh, the first thing that I, I was um, thinking so much was the clumsiness of the hands, for example. I, I took the violinist as an example because um, I, I was working a lot with musicians with problems with the lack of 
lack of coordination, lack of power, and fast fatigue. And there were nothing was found inside. There was nothing wrong with the arms. There was no, no explanation for that. And um, then uh, thinking they felt that it was tight, they felt it was difficult to coordinate, and they 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 were so used to that they had uh, skilled fingers that could do anything. And then suddenly they they lost the control over there. And uh, at that time, I started to look after. This was before I was um, uh, familiar with all the wonderful things that fascia is, is connected with. And uh, we were looking at the all the studies about these uh, uh, static and dynamic muscle work and what's going on inside the uh, the muscle spindle and it's done a lot of work uh, around the occupational medicine because this is very common common feature also in the in the uh, uh, the other kind of repetitioning works and very often these patients they told that they have a feeling that it's kind of filled and also feeling that it's very tight even though in uh, the mid range movements and then uh, sometimes there was visible edema but usually they just felt that it was uh, kind of filled in and and very very different from what it was and the feelings that they have it's very much uh, from the free nerve endings and also then remember remember that the proprioceptors on the on the deep fascia and also under the skin sometimes they felt that uh, it's easy if we gave some uh, some uh, stimulation via the tapes or some supports but usually working on the tissue helped them but then since we understood how to work and how it was dependent from the whole body was so important so here here is one uh, wonderful example of uh, how much this uh, uh, previous traumas and then uh, overloading can cause when you get a trauma and don't uh, recover from that and, and lose the connection and lose the commands to your hands. Here is a hand, uh, one of our patients who couldn't straighten out his fingers. He couldn't, he said that he knows exactly what he should do, but he cannot do it. He could uh, straight, straighten them out uh, passively, but not actively. And then connecting these things on the knowledge that he had been a motocrossing before and this was after a small accident on on that hand and the motocrossing accidents on the rib cage and then uh, some uh, dislocation on the shoulder um, made the the stiffness around the system here so we remember that fascia is very good in compensating everything and then compensation makes always it stiffer and that has an effect on the receptors and also, of course, the spindles and everything we need to make a movement. And when there was a, uh, an irritation around, then this tiny accident was the last one that he couldn't compensate anymore. And then that was the reason. So here we did not uh, move anything on the fingers. We were working on the system that is connected to the function of the fingers. So remember that um, when so much is talked about uh, compensation in the musculoskeletal system, but the compensation always uh, makes the function worse, even though they don't have pain, but they are less, uh, less compliable to do um, all kinds of things. So they feel it's different, but it's working okay but the compensation has already made the changes in the tissues and also in the innovation. And then um, the, the, the most uh, sensitive organs are so important because uh, they are the ones that the, one, the organs, uh, for example, the muscle spindles that are measuring the surroundings all the time. If there is any change, even no pain, then, then the, the, tone of the muscles and agonist antagonist uh, work is not is not as it should be anymore and this is the reason that for example he had been going around nine months already um, to get some therapy and everybody focused only on the finger here is another example of a musician 
who came to me for movement control disorder. So the whole arm, he said that he cannot play anymore. And then I paid attention on the, on the changes that was also, there was on, not uh, no problems in ENMG and uh, he had lost some, uh, he had pins and needles over here. But you can see the, the change also under the skin. And remember, we remember that all, everything that has affects the arm affects also the autonomic nervous system and the interstitium. And you can, in, uh, if, you're very cl um, if you evaluate these patients well enough, you might find these kinds of changes connected to movement control disorders. And these are connected to autonomic nervous system and also the subcutis area. And that was reversed almost. Uh, it was 1.5 uh, five centimeters thinner when we started, and it was reversed within a month, not totally, but about a centimeter. So keep in mind to check always the tissue quality, not just the, uh, the, the muscles, but also the surroundings. Then um, I was doing a workshop in the in a, a congress of uh, cancer. It, it was an international congress on cancer and the cancer survivors have a lot of problems with their movement coordination, with pain, movement restrictions. And, um, and a very good um, article about to, to telling about the intra tissue swelling, uh, stretching the nerve fibers and even though it's not painful in there, but the input and the bombarding of the dorsal horn can elevate or lower the threshold for other problems. And these people also, they have problems in uh, adaptability of the surrounding tissues. And even though, for example, the breast uh, cancer is uh, looked at, it's a superficial fascia problem. But remember that the superficial uh, what's a streaming has been initiated? There are something. Oh, there are some uh, notes here. I hope you see all well. So the connections from the superficial fascia to the muscular system are very numerous in, in this area. And uh, that's why these people, about 20% of them, they develop problems in movement coordination, problems in uh, neuropathic pain and swelling and so on. So always evaluate the tissue quality and evaluate the scars because uh, yeah it's it's the most common cancer in the whole world and the the, the cancers uh, increase all the time and the people survive but they have a lot of problems with the with their scarring and also the cancer treatments for example radiation that makes a burning scar and we need to make those to adapt otherwise these people have problems in movement uh, movement control in the neck and shoulder area, and that affects the whole whole body. If you think of, for example, walking, that affects, uh, this affects the movement of the, of the body. Then we go further. So now when we think of the more normal kind of uh, what we usually people refer to when we, we think of movement control, so walking and everything we do with sports and, uh, we need to remember that there is a basal tone uh, for uh, or the basal tension on the deep fascia that is connected to movement from the underlying muscles. And when we think of different uh, different um, things that or different uh, uh, factors that can affect on that basal tone, and that affects again the coordinating and the movement, then we need to uh, see the different ways. So one of my favorite things is um, to test the timing. So when we are uh, detecting these things in clinical work, we need to check the timing. It's very important. It's not about force. It's not about, uh, yeah, sometimes it's about also movement restriction, but there are several ways of, um, you know, there are a lot of like from Surly Sarman. And so there are so many tests that, uh, we can do and check if there is a, a, a good uh, uh, synergy on the muscles. But one main thing is that we test that body part and we test the timing. That timing, if there is any delay on the tiny little 
when you ask hold against and you feel that they they don't they do something else there can be huge differences usually there are huge differences on different sides now that is a very important thing for the person to that they note themselves that this is a delay that i cannot command that body part of, that i feel it somewhere else and then you compare before and after. So uh, combine this to your movement test and everything you evaluate so that you, you see the, and let them feel and you feel the delay. You can do it in all, all, uh, all uh, planes and, or then you can combine, for example, in, the, in, in between the planes or, or more uh, kind of... Uh, functional if they are throwers or uh, or what else then you can uh, do it in that position that work or or do the sports and when we go in these here our patients with movement control disorders they can look like this tiny little uh, or they can start from the very beginning from the there is no neurological deficit here but a birth trauma made him work differently and every time, so when we move from posture to posture, that is where we move. So the start already tells how you go further. And when we lo look at the fascia, the fascia that makes all the body segments a chain, so multi-joint kinematic chain. So the fascia that is very well innovated, the fascia that is connected to inside the muscle to these uh, to these. Uh, 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 tissues that host the the, the receptors, the, the muscle spindles and and the free nerve endings. So they they sense the situation all the time. So this is automatic. But then what makes the difference surrounding it there is uh, there can be chemical, there can be changes in somewhere in the chain, can be wherever. But it changes the tension, it changes the input, and it changes the output. And you can imagine the here that we are really we're, uh, talking about milliseconds and, and supporting the joints and so on. And uh, now when we think of the tensioning of the myofascia sequences, so 30% of the muscles attach directly. So the tension of the, of the fascia and the tone of the muscle, they play all the way together. And remember, we remember that every joint is very well supported by the fascia system. They are connected all the way inside the joint. So that is the most important uh, system to support the joints. And then that's why uh, also the fascia surrounding the muscle, the retinacula, so very, very well innovated that you get the information from there and the system is coordinating the movement according to that. And um, here is one of my patients who had a problem. It's, uh, he came from low back pain, had lasted for two years. But no, then when we look at here, where does it start? So ask about the delay. Ask about the changes, the problems that they have had before. And there are so many studies about how important it is that the whole chain is working well. So any part of the chain is able to disturb the, the whole close, the fascia closes the chain, so hold the whole system. And when we go over, then one of my favorite, favorite topics here are the kids. And Nita Tolvanen has done wonderful work with the kids and uh, with the fascial system. And we even have a study going on in Finland now that there is a... Uh, uh, and uh, in uh, in eastern Finland, there is a study that they have done already the pain pain heel pain kids and also on the evaluating made a gait analysis before and after fascial manipulation on on uh, CP CP palsy and the and the changes on the movement and the feelings and seeing the controlling the movement are immediate and this is something that is very very important that we can help from all the way the beginning. So the input uh, for the tone is, uh, is central, but then the secondary changes that come, they affect on the muscle spindle. And usually when these kids grow, then the stiffness increases 
and then uh, the they're moving and controlling the movement and also the body perception is getting uh, is getting worse so the basal tension uh, can change for so many for so many reasons and if you are able to re uh, to make it better so if you think of the what we started with the uh, the viscosity and we are, we are able to work on on the tissue surrounding these receptors you are able to help these kids to gain a more normal movement you need to repeat that of course as we need to repeat in every uh, neurological disease but these patients these kids have a lot better way of coping in life and then they remain in in a better shape when we think of the proprioception and also um, moving and uh, mobility and then controlling the movement uh, remember always the chain we were talking about how fascia is uh, you is connecting all the body segments and then uh, connect it all to the all these receptors so should there be a hypertension as we saw on the previous picture then there always needs always needs to be uh, something that is uh, uh, balancing that uh, tension so even though we find some problems and uh, and uh, problems in the movement control somewhere or then also the feeling of movement or uh, lack of uh, lack of sense of that body part then we need to see the whole chain and also the uh, agonist antagonist uh, work and also the synergistic uh, muscle work in there and uh, i go further the muscle spindles um, are something that i really um, started looking differently after uh, getting uh, aware of the fascia system and, and luigi's thoughts and think that luigi has been uh, proposing these uh, pre uh, how important the the fascia and then the uh, interfacial activation but the fascia surrounding the muscle spindle is for the movement and a uh, um, couple of slides later we can see that your neuro neurophysiologists are showing that actually that is what is going on how the periphery has so important part of uh, of the the input has so in, is so important for the movement control so we we remember that we when we aim to do the movement when we think of the movement then the the interfusal the gamma motor neurons activate the interfusal fibers and that interfusal fiber activating is uh, is activating activating the um, or changing a little bit, tensioning the muscle spindle. And remember, we have 50,000 50, muscle spindles in our body. And uh, we can say it's almost one muscle spindle per motor, motor unit. And uh, this checking, pre-checking, is something that they have already done a lot of work in the occupational medicine with these people who feel clumsiness, who feel lack of co coordination in their movements. And um, he, this uh, Michael Dimitrio has done his um, PhD on on uh, on muscle spindle and on, and gamma motor neuron and motor learning. So it's a huge interest in this. And when we look at this um, the spindle tuning, so the independent preparatory control of the ref reflex muscle stiffness. So this is. Um, this is changing all the time it's a kind of reading the surroundings it's also it's of, of course measuring the length of the muscle but then the the static the group two these are activating the gamma motor neuron according to the activity what we're doing but then uh, there are other things that can affect this muscle spindle too not just our thoughts or the aim to do the muscle or what's going from outside the tension changes also the chemistry around here and now we come again to the cytokines we come again to the interstitium and the and the, and the normal physiology and uh, when you look here the these wonderful pictures that are from uh, Cheng Lei Fan's uh, uh, lecture and, and uh, he had made his PhD on on aging on the fascial aging and um, uh, there is a um, 
interesting thing that what's going on around the muscle spindle or the muscle spindle capsule, for example, when we get uh, over, but uh, older, but when looking at the surroundings, there is a, the viscosity of, of the surroundings is important. And when you were looking at these small kids and their, the changes in their muscle, so for example, spasticity makes a bit, uh, um, it makes most changes in the paramecium. And that is what changes also when we get older. So the surroundings of the muscle spindle has a huge effect on what kind of uh, effect we get. Here is a nice article about these central commands and how, how, it, how the muscle spindle works. But I go further to this example, that is a living example of what happens around this measurement tool. And um, these were, these were the uh, examples that we were really thinking about what's going on there. There was a, a, a lot of studies on movement control disorders on different, um, um, for example, flexion disorder, flexor dis control disorder, and then the extent, active extension and rotational and so on, and based on Shirley Sarman studies. And there are a couple of um, PhD works done on that. And we were thinking, what's going on in here? When they bend forward, then there is sudden broke on the movement. So it's not a break on the uh, nervous conduction because these muscles are innervated from three different layer levers. But it's something, it looks like that's like someone is turning off the, the muscle activity right on that part. And um, this was a guy, a patient of ours who had been operated, he had been had problems in his back and had been operated on the disc prolapse three years before. And he had had all these exercises on the movement control, control disorders and so on. But he said that he uh, he just gets ill when he turn, he is working as a car repair and he needs to be forward bent at his work. So this brings a huge tension on all the structures behind the spine. And then um, I was so happy when I saw this study made by if you look at all these, all these um, um, uh, writers on the study, uh, there is uh, uh, Carla was there, Carla Steko, and then Paul Hodges, who has been uh, uh, doing a very much work with the movement controls and uh, multifida, if you remember, and uh, transversus abdominis and all these things. Anina Schmidt, who has been doing, uh, who is still uh, is working on on the in Oxford? She's doing studies on neuro compression and and all kinds of nervous uh, connected things, and they started doing research on what's going on around the muscle spindle when there is a, for example, disc prolapse or disc uh, degeneration, and they found that there was structural change to the muscle spindles that can modify their mechanical properties. And it's, it's around the capsule. So after the, there is a change in the, in the surroundings, and usually there is prolapse or this degeneration. It was not prolapse. This generation doesn't come alone. There is always some problems if, not, if it's not age-related. But this was a kind of trauma-related. And this is what we saw. So now if we get back to the things that we see the movement control disorder why shouldn't we go around and check the check the surroundings of the mesh of those receptors that are guiding these movements so this looks like that there is a there is a lack of control in that area and then the muscles are the same over a couple of segments but on, on that area where they had the problem the change in the, the most important proprioceptive element has changed. So it's not enough without just exercises or uh, of a pain education. You need to use your hands and make the surroundings so that the person can exercise safely and then they get a benefit. Same kind of changes. These are again Cheng Lei from Cheng Lei's um, article. Uh, you can see that, yeah, it's an open access article. Is when we get older. So when the, the stiffness increases, uh, the, there, is a, le, there is more 
um, intramuscular connective tissue, so extracellular matrix gets uh, different and it's stiffer and also the surroundings of the muscle spindle are different. Then adaptab adaptability and then the, the activation of the stimulation is uh, slower and that's why we have uh, it's uh, easier to, to get the problems with the system. And then also the scars. So I was talking about the scars already connected to, to, the, um, to the cancer patients, but um, Sigrid Menz, he is a neurophysiologist and he has, been, uh, he is, has, a, has a strong opinion about the, the structural disorders of the fascia and then the information sent by the spindles to the central nervous system and then interfere with the proper coordinated movement. And we can see that on the neurology, on the on the uh, you can see here is also she came in um, with the with the diagnosis of CRPS, but the, that was reversed. And uh, then also by treating from above, so then telling the whole history and thinking of why she's reacting like she's reacting and why cannot she use the arm. Then we need to collect the whole history and then normalize the fascial system. And then also from Carmelo, you one of wonderful work again, again from the scars. And there was a nice study, um, or it was not a study; it was a what they did in the Eastern University or uh, the Applied Sciences on Physio Education. There was a one of the students who had problems up two years after ACL operation, and she could not activate the uh, the um, quadriceps well enough and and lost control in the knee just by making the scar adaptable again, the EMG activity uh, reversed and she was able to use the, the leg as before. She was a athletic, so she really paid attention and knew what she would have to be. But if, if the peripheral input is wrong, then the output is wrong too. So it should be a routine procedure and it should be also um, before some bigger operations, it, it could be well that uh, we could take care of these tissues before. So um, the movement control, uh, we were so interested in already in the 90s before I even knew about this system called fascial system. We were looking what happens with persons with problems and we were doing all kinds of tests with walking and EMGs and and uh, and we noted changes when we did something around but we stupid us we couldn't understand that the change can come from below because we were focused on that if the problem is here then we were focusing on that area but uh, i'm happy that we don't think like that anymore so here's the small guy that you saw already in the beginning and the the first slides so you see that the problem here down is affecting the whole system. So that's why we really need to work on the whole system. And uh, it's so common that uh, the problems already from the first trauma, they affect the proximal parts. And that is, that is studied very well because they are so common. And if you look here, the long-term effect, there are studies here from uh, Carmelo again, who my favorite author, and then the long-term effects, and then what happens and how they could prevent the trauma to happen again. So you can prevent traumas. You can affect the movement control by treating the fascial system. Here's, um, and then the important thing, so the significant delay on activation, that was noted, but they couldn't explain it. So here is a they even the studies that have been done on for all these movement control disorders and and traumas they couldn't explain how it happened but the what we know explains and here is a from the less variability and so on all these changes are connected to the system that is in response or, or that is um connecting the elements together in our body and it's transferring transferring the uh, muscle force and then it's a very very important sensory organ so test the delay 
and test the compensatory movements. Ask the patient, how do you feel? In what part do you need to work more? So it's very simple. You don't need to know those things, nice EMGs. And even though we know they are not that um, very, very spe uh, specific, but you can see the synchrony and timing. And from this, that uh, we can see the changes in the movement and changes in the control. And you can see also the the, the, here is the normal activity on the muscles, and here's the delay. And this delay, you can test with this that I showed already here. All of these patients have uh, shown, even though they are uh, um, uh, professional hockey players or professional football players, whatever, you can see that there is a delay and they feel it. And just by doing exercise, you don't get that control back. You need to work on the system. And um, here is something that I collected uh, that has been shown that, for example, this kind of movement control disorder is killing the disc very soon. So uh, it's been studied very much, but not in connection to the system that is hosting the muscles. Here is again, yeah, I'll go over this book because I've talked about that and that too. I'm using too much of your time. So wonderful things that have been um, studied already for example three weeks of immobilization is changing changing a lot in the tissue changing the the uh, the uh, the alignment of the of the even though there is no trauma so alignment of the of the tissues and then that makes it feel stiffer and it makes the surroundings again for this for the receptors different and that's why before you give them any exercise, check that the the uh, the structure is adaptable for that uh, for that function. And here we this we talked already about this neuro things. And then the firing. I think I thought that I have two times this picture, but the firing in uh, in some areas is kind of a interfering with the other uh, with the other lines of force. So when we think of this, uh, what's going on inside the muscle and outside the muscle, so the pyrimesium that is mostly affected for, for if we think of the, uh, for example, spasticity and also the immobilization, pyrimesium is uh, seamlessly connected to epimesium, and that is connected to the deep touch. So we can affect this by functioning or by applying our, our manuality on the areas, the main areas, and find out the way to make the tissue ready for movement again. And here is a small study that um, I did already in the very beginning, in the, I think it was done in 2012, uh, when I really got the idea of how important the system is for the, for the movement control. And we did it on the pelvic movement control. And um, here are the main elements that I already saw. So the research question was that can dysfunction of fascia have an impact on pelvic movement control? And uh, can we, well, by, a, by normalize the sliding and tensioning ability of the fascia have effect on the movement control? And what we did, so we had patients and we tested with our our movement control tests and, and delay. And then also uh, we, we measured what happened. And uh, these are things that were already uh, kind of uh, reviewed before uh, tests that are shown to be um, repeatable and, and, uh, and good for testing these things. And uh, then we evaluated them and then uh, and uh, here are the markings again. And then we treated, and there was not, even though there were similar movement control disorders, there was not two, uh, two similar treatments on this. And uh, single leg stance lateralization test was what we used for the most. And here are the, the scores that we have. And we could show that uh, the results, uh, just by treating the fascial system, we could change, change the the or make it more normal the movement control, and that has an effect also on the loading of the structures. So, 
there was a clear change and I, I could wish to do this on the bigger sample and also test the, uh, the reaction times and so on. So maybe I will have some students to do that. So the conclusion here was that the change towards the movement symmetricity can be gained by taking care of the main structure that is hosting the receptors in our body. So thank you. That was, um, I'm very happy I could tell these, uh, my, my kind of uh, experiences on the fascia system and movement control disorders. Thank you so much, Tina, for uh, your interesting speech as always. And uh, 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 also, also this, uh, it was very, very wonderful, but also very comprehensive uh, of uh, uh, the all uh, different aspects, different elements uh, from uh, inner vision, relationship between the inner vision and, uh, for example, the muscle spindle. Uh, for this, uh, uh, really, uh, thank you for uh, for your speech. Mm -hmm.